This is the 2nd of February of 2021. And before I get started, I'm going to say in advance, forgive me for um, not pronouncing these names the correct way that they should be pronounced. Um, we're going to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, put every one of us within the sound of my voice in a hedge of protection, saturate us with the blood of Christ once again. Father, give us revelation, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, and visit us in our dreams and in our waking hours. Hallelujah. Help us to hear your voice more clearly. And Father, let only your word go out on this message. Please keep it quiet and cool inside and quiet outside, and upload this video with no hiccups. In Jesus' name. Well, uh, the name of this study is Romans chapter 16. It's the last book in uh, Romans. <clears throat> so we're going to read it. I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is at Censorea, um, that ye receive her in the Lord as become his saints, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she has need of you. For she has been a secure, which is a helper. She gave hand up when they need it, of many and of myself also. Uh, Greet Priscilla and Aquila, helpers in Christ Jesus who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Salute uh, my well-beloved Epatris, uh, uh, who is the first fruits of Asasia unto Christ. Greet Mary, who bestowed much labor on us. Salute Androconus, um, in, and uh, Junia, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners, who are of note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me, greet Amphilius and my beloved in the Lord. Salute Urban, our helper in Christ, and Stacy's, my beloved. Salute Apelles, approved in Christ. Salute them which are of um, Aristobulus household. We salute Aronian, my kinsmen. Greet them that be of the house of uh, Narcus, which are in the Lord. Salute um, Trophenia and uh, Trophenius, who labor in the Lord. Salute um, the beloved Paris who labored much in the Lord. Salute Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother and mine. Salute um, Astinkritus, Philagon, uh, Hermes, Pat Patrobus, Hermes, and the brother of which are with them. Salute um, Philogus and Julia and Nicholas and his sister and Olympus and all the saints which are with them. Salute one another with a holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. For they are not of such uh, serve, not our Lord uh, Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speech, deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience is come abroad unto all men. I am glad therefore on your behalf, but yet I would have you wise that which is good and simple concerning evil. And the, and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Timotheus, my work fellow, and Lucas, and Jason, and Sepater, my kinsmen, salute you. I, Tudorus, who wrote this epistle, um, salute you in the Lord. Gaius, my host, and the whole church, salute you. Epaterus, Eratrus, the chamberlain of the city, salute you. And Cordus, a brother. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of 
Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith to God only be wise, be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Now I want to say in the mid-50s CE, um, the man here that just said salute, he's the one that wrote, um, wrote the epistle here, chapter 16 to the Romans. His name was Tertur Tertius, if I pronounced that right, I'm sorry, if I haven't. Um, and he, he wrote that he was a secretary to uh, Paul. Paul dictated it to him. Okay, this is a warning to believers. Another warning. Remember, we have a warning uh, from, it's, it's in uh, Revelation, other than other places in the Word, but specifically I taught on Revelation chapter 1 to Revelation chapter 3, and their warnings to us. Stay under the blood of Christ. Stay in His commandments. Stay repentant. Hallelujah. Or you can lose what He gave you. If you, you know, you can walk away. He's telling us, stay steadfast. Just like in this chapter, once again, he says, Paul says, stay steadfast. So, um, this is a warning to believers to stay away from anyone um, who teaches anything other than Christ Jesus, the gospel. So, he tells us to avoid negative influences. Don't listen or look at them, okay? Actually, the word tells us these are wolves in sheep's clothing, Let's look at that. Uh, Matthew 7 and the verse 15. Matthew 7. I'll mark that first. 7. And verse, thir uh, verse uh, 15. Matthew 7, 15. These little red um, strips of construction paper, they really come in handy. Okay. Romans 7.15 Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but outwardly they are ravening wolves. Okay, in Galatians 5.7-10 Hallelujah. Galatians 5, verse 7 to 10. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he is hallelujah now i thank god for that um that revelation there excuse me hair my face okay uh, again we're warned to hold on to christ jesus like i was saying paul said it again and there's else places too and one of them we're going to look at is uh philippians chapter 4 verse 1 philippians 4 verse 1 thank you holy spirit Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for, my joy and crown. So stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. Notice that, stand fast in the Lord, which means you can walk away. I hair on my face, I'm sorry. Okay, which means you have the right. I mean, you wouldn't have free choice if you didn't have the right to walk away. But God doesn't want that. That's why he's waited so long and woes, like woos us by his Holy Spirit to come to him. Hallelujah. So uh, just some background. Like I said, Paul wrote this in uh, 50 CE with a secretary. That's what I was saying earlier. Also, uh, commentators say that he didn't make it to Rome. But in this in his Roman book here, he says that his, his, his prayers were to, uh, to come... To see them on his way to Spain, but if you remember, when uh, before he went to Jerusalem, there was men that would tell him, or people were telling him, 
do not go there. You will be bound. Go, don't go there. You'll be bound and in prison. So he's he went ahead anyhow. And you know, I all I got to say about that is, uh, you know what? I have been one that has gone my own way, and um, I've made a mess of things. Literally made a mess of things. God forgive me, and He has forgiven me for that. I just ask Him to forgive me of known and unknown sin daily, many times a day, in fact. I ask Him to uh, show me any dark spots that I can repent of them, because literally, I don't want anything to hinder my relationship with Him while I'm here on earth or while I'm in the next dimension. Guarantee, you know, your body, your, your soul, your spirit is an eternal being, is an eternal creation. So when your body dies out, because your body is not eternal, it's uh, corruptible at this point. And we live in a fallen world, a cor which is a corrupted world. When you when this body gives out and your spirit and soul come out, you know, uh, you're going to go to one place or two. Either you accept a Christ and you're going to go live with your Savior, Christ Jesus, and, or your Creator. You know, me, I choose life. I pray you choose life. And to study more about him and to share your faith with him and what he's done for you. No matter if it was 20 years ago, share it. Because it, it just builds your faith up and it builds others up. And the others' faith up. And uh, so it, do that because you're going to one or two places. And if you go, if you don't accept Christ on this earth, because this earth is the only time you're going to be able to accept him, your soul's going to go straight to hell and you'll be with Satan and the demons for eternity. So we don't want that. We want life, peace, joy, a life in abundance. Hallelujah. Forevermore. Eternal life with our Creator. Hallelujah. But anyways, if you uh, have any more information on um, on that, like I said, commentaries or commentators are saying that he didn't make it to Rome. And, to Rome. So let's leave it there. And if you leave any a message in the um, comments, I'd appreciate it. Okay, Romans chapter 16, verse 17 and 18 warns us against being around or supporting anyone causing divisions, okay? Anyone who teaches contrary to the gospel of Christ. All right, that's uh, 16 and 17. Let's look at that. Actually, 17 and 18, sorry. Uh, and now I beseech you, brother, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them, for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speech deceive the heart of the simple. They want you to be obedient to his voice, not the voice of 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 a naysayer or someone that, that causes division or someone that argues and that's all they want to do is argue they don't want to bring edification to you or anybody else they just want their point and that's what they say and you to do it and it's a spirit of control it's a spirit of islam and it's a it's a it's a demon behind those spirits you know uh anyhow that's another subject i'm pretty sure i put up a study on that but we want to, for the most part, we want to keep our focus on Christ. We always want to have our focus on Christ. We want to know who our enemy is, because, like my husband says, if you give a brand, if you give a brand new recruit a, a weapon or a, or a gun, right, a rifle, and you say go for it, but you don't tell them who their enemy is, how are they going to defend themselves? How are they going to defend anybody, in fact, or the nation? If they don't know who their enemy is. So there, therefore we have to know who the enemy is. And that enemy is Satan himself. The old dragon. He was thrown out of heaven because he was prideful. And wanted to be in the position of God. Hallelujah. You research that. Okay. Paul teaches us. As, um, that uh, false teachers and those causing divisions are only out for themselves. I just read that for you. Again. Not for the things of God. So let's see what the word says. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 23 to 24. 2 Timothy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Chapter 2, verse 23 and 24. 2 Timothy 2, 
23 and 24. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strife, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach patience. Okay? This is what he's saying. And we even see the same thing that David said, and the same thing in Psalms, Song of Solomon says, to stay away from those that quarrel, because... <laughs> you know, uh, he says, you'll become like them because we'll take our focus off on the what, what the prize is, Christ, in fact, Christ. And we'll start looking at what he's saying and refuting him. And no, that's not good. Walk away. Say, what I say to people is, I, I ask Father God to open your spiritual eyes and your spiritual understanding. In fact, let me say this real quick. I had a woman that lived next to me. She had to have been 78 or something like that. I know she had a lot of mental problems, a lot of health problems, right? Anyhow, I'm not going to go into that. But every time she seen me, she would call me every name that you could think of, every evil name you could think of, rather. Nothing good but my name. So what I started doing is say, God bless you. And then I started saying, well, it's cut, cut, kept, kept catching on my tongue. I kept saying, um, God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. Every time she started cursing me, she she just gets this look. Every time I said it to her, a dumbfounded, blank look. Her face would go white, and she would walk away until she quit coming around me altogether. I still ask God to open her spiritual eyes. See, and the Word tells us those that have not accepted Christ are the enemies of God. And she was an enemy of God. Anyone that does not accept Christ Christ is an enemy of God. So uh, let's see what Titus 3 and then verse 9 to 11 says. Titus right after 2 Timothy. Titus 3 and then 9 to 11. But avoid questions, but avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. A man that is a heretic after the first and second admonition reject, knowing that he is a such subverted and sinneth being condemned of himself. Now, I'm going to tell you here, I don't want to put anyone down, but I have a family member that every time we go to study, even though he said he wanted to sit and study, he wanted to learn the word. Didn't matter what I said, what anybody else said, he had to over talk them. He had to be right. He had to be right. And you know what I say to people like that? I just say, you you do what you have to do. I request that you take your concerns to God. Ask Christ, ask God, Father God in Jesus' name about your concerns. And that's where I leave it anymore. Because I'm not going to sit there and bring my love, myself down to where they're at, my, their level of arguing and fussing, because it doesn't matter. But there is one thing that does matter. It's that once saved, always saved. And that was another thing. He's always confused. Always, He says, well, God's not going to take it from you. You cannot lose it. Correct. God will not. He's correct and he's wrong too. God will not take salvation away from you after you've given it. He's given it to you. After you've accepted Christ. After you've gotten salvation. But, like Paul says over and over and over in the word, stand fast. Stay under the blood. And even in Psalms, it goes back as far as Psalms 91. Stay under the blood of Christ. Stay under the blood covenant of Christ. Stand fast, he says. Hold fast on those things. And like I mentioned earlier, Revelation chapter 3, chapter 1 to chapter 3, they're all warnings to stay in Christ or you can lose what you have. How hard is that? Ask God to open your understanding, your spiritual eyes. And the fact is, that is a heaven and a hell uh, decision. Because that's saying that, okay, I accepted Christ when I was... Say, I'm going to give you an example I've given before. On my Facebook page, Knowledge for the Glory of God, Kathleen, Newman, Kathleen Frame Newman. Look, a 12-year-old gave her life to Christ 
But then she walked away. She grew up. She had sex outside of marriage. She hated the things of God. She didn't want nothing to do with Christ. Nothing. She just wanted what she wanted to make her body feel good. Didn't care about others. Didn't care about... Normally, now, if you're not in Christ, you don't care about others, too. That's another thing. And then God... And then, then expecting Father God, who is holy and pure and righteous and almighty and has no evil in him, no shadow in him, and cannot stand evil, will not tolerate it. But he's going to let me come into his abode. Think about that. That once saved, always saved the doctor from hell. You've got to stay in Christ. You have to stay under his blood, which means get all his gifts. Ask him for all his gifts. Once you accept Christ, you are eligible to have the gift of tongues. That's a that's communication. That's pure communication between you and your creator. That means your mind goes whoom, out where and Holy Spirit is speaking through you. That's how you know you have your eternal down payment for eternal life with Christ and your creator in heaven. So go and research those things for yourself. So like I said, he's not going, God will never take your blessings away. He will never take your blessings away. He will never... Take your salvation away, but you can walk away and then go and walk, go and read uh, Jude. Even though it's in the Old Testament, it still it still applies today, because what if you are in Christ, you'll get all these blessings. Chapter read chapter Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight to Deuteronomy chapter twenty nine verse one, and it tells you what will happen, what curses will come upon you if you're outside the will of God, and you don't want that. You want to stay in repentance every day. Ask him to lead, guide, and protect you. Ask him to put his edge of protection around. Ask him to forgive you of known and unknown sins. Ask him to show you any spots that don't that he don't uh, please with, like he's not pleased with, or, or that are, are dark. In Jesus' name, I hope that helps someone. In fact, I'm sorry, I know that helps someone. Hallelujah. So keep your focus on Christ. Stay in the Word. Stay in prayer. Stay in praying in tongues. Stay researching biblical hermeneutics like the how, the where, the culture, the when, the what, who is being spoken to. Why did they say that? That's the biblical hermeneutics you want to find out. Okay? You want to continue to share your talents. Talents is not only, uh, well, it's tithing. Talents, tithing. Tithing is your tithing of your talents, tithing of your energy, tithing of your time, tithing of your prayers, tithing of your um, money, Those your helps. Those things. In other words, thinking of other people before you think of you. Okay, we want to continue in those things because that is of the kingdom. Those are kingdom keys. Hallelujah. So here I'm going to end with a prayer here. Father Abba, I love you. You are my all in all. There is none like you. You love your creation so dearly that you sacrificed Christ Jesus, the word for me. Father, I believe and accept your son's sacrifice. I thank you and ask you to live in me. Father, I give you my life and all that I am and have. Father, I am surrendered and willing vessel for your use. Help me hear, know, trust, believe, and obey your voice. In Jesus' name. Now, if you agree with that prayer, say amen. If you don't, don't say nothing at all. But I pray that uh, you will go and research out these things for yourself. And I pray that you'll accept Christ. And I always, always pray that your eyes will be opened. Your understanding. You'll get revelation, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You'll have dreams and visions. And he'll come and visit you in each. In Jesus' name.